All right, we're cleaning up this composting area bed. This is uh, mostly, I think it's pretty close to 100% compost that I made this year. And I already spent some time unraveling all these tomato vines. So we grew a pretty good crop of tomatoes out of this bed already. I also grew a crop of beans. You can see there's beans hanging from up here. Oh, maybe you can't see that. I'll show you after I'm done cleaning this stuff out. So I just I did harvest a couple of green tomatoes off of these vines just now. We got a frost coming in, pretty bad one. And nothing's gonna make it past that frost in a couple days. It's a nice day today, so it's a good day to go ahead and clean this up. I've got this barrel over here. Ooh, look at our root system on this guy. This is the Sun Golds. Got a nice root system on there. That was in, I know that one was pure compost. Got a half right Sun Gold left yet. So this is the last Sun Gold one. I ate these things like crazy this summer. Not much flavor left. So I want to pick this compost out of here. And uh, I'm going to pile it all up for the winter. Then I'll have it for use however I want to use it next year. But uh, we also have potatoes in here. That's why we want to take this out and see what kind of potatoes. There's a few potatoes. Right up above here. Right there. Not many. But it's a yield. Thing is, is this was in the in some pretty deep shade. Knew we were having uh, lots of issues with uh, rodents in here eating tomatoes. And another one. What's that? There, the squirrel planted a black walnut in there. Here's a nice one here. Growing on top of that brick. We want to see the beans, so I'll take this camera off. Right here, you can see the beans. Lots and lots and lots of beans. Growing amongst the sharp thorns of a gooseberry. This is the bed. I just took all the soil out of it. That's probably five feet. Okay, good news. Now we're going to see if there's any potatoes in this bee box. I already grew a crop of uh, tomatoes out of it. And this is the root system from it. This is all uh, compost right in here. So that's the rest of the tomato vine I already clipped the top part off. Here's some onions. These are potato onions actually so I could probably transplant those. We gotta move them out of here. It's a nice day today and I can do it. And a steak. Put that over there for now. And here's the potato box. And under, oh there's a couple potatoes already. Here's another one. Those are purple Peruvians. I'm gonna get out. Oops! My bee boxes are falling apart. Of 
Because that's why I was using the V-Box, is because they're falling apart. <laughs> Just look at that. That is compost. That's a summer old now. And I in a, this in this season I grew tomatoes, potatoes, plastic, got plastic everywhere. And uh, peppers. I had a pepper plant in here too, I'll try. That's a stem. A little potato. Soil's cold, here's another two potatoes. Which I find is just amazing because I've already grew a really nice crop of tomatoes out of this. So uh, the tomatoes and the potatoes are literally planted, you know, inches apart. potatoes in here than that. Last year I had some great crops of potatoes doing it the same way. And more. Dead and up. Some more. Heading up. More plastic. Just can't believe all this plastic that I got. The birds bring it in. Here's another one. Okay, so this one bee box grew if I can get them all in my hands at once or not. Let's just dump them all out. Put them all in my hands. So I have breakfast in the morning and I put potatoes with eggs, that's probably good enough for you know two of these per breakfast. And that's a good side dish. That and onions together. Onions, potatoes, and eggs. So here's my next one. The camera over here. see that. There's a pepper plant that still has a few peppers on it, so we're going to have a pepper harvest. It's got to come out too. Oh, I see a pepper uh, tomato already. So there's a potato. That is called a masquerade. Multicolor. I never did fill this one up with compost. Just put it kind of halfway and everything kind of got going and I couldn't really finish it. Another one right there. That I think is a masquerade that didn't turn multicolored. Just turn it over to this side and we'll use the big shovel. Another masquerade. There's a little bitty purple Peruvian. Oh, there's another one. More plastic. Another purple. Oh, masquerade. Another 
can start. There's some more. That's a little bit better one. Okay. So that this is how much there was in this B box. And then plus I have all these peppers here that I'm going to be harvesting. This pepper plant grew out of it. Let me get it off the core and you can see I grew a lot of peppers but you can see there's lots more left. So that will come in the house with me. Yeah, and although the potato harvest didn't seem like a lot once I put it all into a pail it seemed like it was not too bad of a harvest. And in light of it being just a part of what grew out of those areas. You know, we grew tomatoes and peppers, a few onions. I think it was pretty good. You add that, all of it together. And I'm positive, of course, I'm not doing any scientific studies where I'm, you know, measuring or weighing the amount of food that's coming out of here or measuring the nutrition value. I'm not doing any of that. Just my instincts are telling me that I grew way more in those eight, these really small areas than if I would have only grown one crop. So uh, now we're off on to the next project. I've been cutting these Achira down and you see I got beautiful bulbs for overwintering. The leaves and the, the, the upper stalks where there's no meat in I've been putting it in this barrel. I emptied this barrel halfway of its fermented water and I've been uh, I guess this batch here where'd I put it uh, oh every single precocious and European hazelnut that's densely plant planted in that experimental hazelnut thicket got uh, at least one gallon of this fermented mix one to two gallons so now I'm gonna be filling this up with the achira leaves I've, I've got more achira than just what's in the composting area but uh, I'm going to fill that up and then I've got this batch here of, I think it's stinging nettles, that's kind of stemmy. Once I get all those leaves in there, I'll put this fermented stems, these things right here, back over the top to force the leaves underwater. They'll ferment and then I'll use them as a starter for my aerobic compost pile for 2020, spring of 2020. Wait for it. <laughs> But on the Sachira, all these bulbs are edible. They don't taste like anything great. The inside of these stalks are edible. They kind of taste like a, a, a light rhubarb. So there must be some oxalic acid in it. I can tell this is, uh, that's pretty soft there. So at some point it starts to become edible in this thick stalk. And I haven't ate very much of it. But uh, I might take a few stalks inside and give her another try tonight. Look at this big monster. This is the one that I'm definitely saving for seed. And I'll try eating some of the other ones. The way I've been saving them, and I've got videos up on it, you know, just type in Rick Larson Achira in the YouTube search box, and you'll find them. But what I found out is I've tried different methods of storing them through the winter. We have a long winter here, US planting zone five, USDA planting zone five here in Wisconsin. And the best method I found was I just put them in a box and covered them all with leaves and I didn't break anything apart. And they had plenty of moisture on their own to make it through the winter. And this year I actually planted them really late. Uh, yeah, I don't remember, but whenever I finished with this compost is when I planted these. So it was, you know, late May at the earliest, probably June. And here we are, middle of October, and that's how much I grew here out of one bulb since June. June, July, August, September, October. Four and a half months. And even these aren't slouches. Look at how big that baby is. <laughs> There's another monster right there. And it's starting to grow again. Actually the frost just touched it a little bit. The Akon, most of those leaves had, dry, had, uh, had uh, wilted. 
and we're starting to grow new leaves. But here you can see the Achira, most of it stayed alive. So the light frost doesn't kill it. And I'm talking about like 31, 32 degree frost. You see that's, that's what it will do. The whole plant will do this once a heavy frost comes in. One might come tonight. Definitely one's going to be here Monday, Monday night. So I'm doing it now while the leaves are still green and I can preserve that green material for my compost. And since I'm taking a video, here we got dry beans that were in the composting area. One plant came up and boy, there's a lot of dry beans on it. Right here, it came out over here, got more dry beans. And all these peppers, I'm gonna go ahead and clip the tops off of these and put those in that burrow as well. All green material that we can use. And then we got, still got crops growing in here. But that'll be another video. There's all the achira from the composting area in the barrel. And there's a pile of pepper leaves. I did get a real small harvest of peppers. So that'll be enough for some flavoring. Got a meal or two. Why not? Anything is a yield. Of course, these jalapenos will have a little heat to them. But, uh, we'll use them appropriately. Now, now for these pepper leaves to get in that bowl. Oh, I put that fermented stinging nettle stems over the top now. And I'm going to fill this with water right up to here. Give it enough room for a little ice expansion. I have overwintered greens like this a couple years in a row and these burrows you know you're afraid they're going to crack or something but they're pretty well built. So far they haven't. And this will be my second barrel I have ready. This one here is uh, mostly comfrey. And I put the yakon leaves in this one. So this one has uh, a, a wide mixture, even more mixture than the first, including achira leaves. And this will be the starter between the greens and the water of my new compost heap that I'm going to start next next spring. So we're cleaning this up, working it down. One of these videos here I'll have this trellis that I built for the tomatoes out of the way and we'll dig up this compost and we'll see just what we have inside of it. One of the comments on the uh, YouTube video, the last one or the second or one before this, asked about how come they didn't see any worms but I only, I only showed a real little small short clip of just a couple of holes that I made and I didn't have any worms in it so I think that's interesting observation as I'm digging this up we'll see. It was full of uh, compost worms when I first put it down. Now maybe what I'm thinking is the compost worms have done their thing now we're gonna find earthworms. We'll see. Okay next step I gotta dig these to cheer up put them in a box. Oh next step is filling up the barrel then the Achira. It's full. All I have to do is spin the cover on and we aren't going to open it again until we start our 2020 aerobic compost pile. And there, that's another completed project. I think I'll take a break for the rest of the day. <laughs> no reason to be in a rush. Okay, Achira is in the basement. 